What's going on guys and thanks again for tuning to my channel and I got my clothing uniform right here. I got straight from work to do the review here, which means usually three, four hours of sleep. Not much rest for me here, but I'm very happy to actually help you guys review these products, which by the way, GVM sent me this product here for me to review. This video is not sponsored by GVM. I don't get paid to say anything here and all my words and opinions are my own. So today we're actually checking out the GVM SD600D. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. I'm gonna tell you up front everything that I plan to show you in this video here. Of course, is the review of the light and maybe possibly some tips of filmmaking regarding lighting and other things. And also I'm gonna be showing you guys also testing this product you know, in front of people to see how this light looks like, what it can do. So this video is gonna be a complete thing, everything they wanna know about this light, how to power this using the V-mount batteries, what to do, what not to do, and a bunch of other things. And if you're new to this channel, the way I review my products here, for example, let's say, what if I invited you to come right here to check out this light here? How long you're gonna take to check this thing out at least half an hour right so sit back relax don't skip anything all i'm trying to do here is to show you guys what this thing can do and this thing is in excess of 1400 dollars i guess it's worth you know watching a few minutes here right so thank you again here's the actual case very nice and elegant little fabric here right here you have the actual reflector and it also come with these pads here and again everything comes padded Here's the actual light. And check out the LEDs on this thing. And here's the beautiful ballast that comes with this unit. And you also notice there's a little space here to protect the knobs when you actually pack it back. So here it is, look at this thing. And the ballast doesn't sit on the floor of the case. It actually comes with this extra padding here. So everything has tons of protection. So you can put the ballast here and pack everything back and also put this on top. And here's the actual locking cable to connect to the light and to the ballast. And this is the actual power cord. This one, I was actually impressed with it because it is a very generous length. This thing is at least 15 or maybe 20 feet. I'm not sure, but it's pretty long. And also the grade of the cable is very similar to my Ari lights. And this features a power cone cable, which is also a huge plus. And the last item is the super clamp. It has a V-mount shape here that you can actually attach this whole thing to the stand or any pole that you like even the table because it also comes with this adapter here for flat surfaces. And the best and quickest way to open this instead of doing this here, just grab this part and then you turn. It's a lot easier and then it opens. And the same thing, you just grab this to close it down. Now the first thing here to get that out of the way, let's talk about fan noise. As you can see, you hear actually the fan and this is actually set to the minimum. And speaking of fan noise, the last thing that I'm worried about here regarding 600 watt lights and even worse, which is a good thing worse, right? 1200 watt lights. The last thing that I'm worried about here is fan noise because I'm gonna be using the slides for outdoors, shining through a window to bounce light in the back there, or having a huge panel somewhere to provide the biggest light that I can get. For interviews like this, I use like 100 watt lights, 150 watts and such. For these things here, I use for something else. Unless, of course, the client wants me to shoot a subject in front of the camera and the background happens to be a large window panel of some sort, they need to match the exposure of the background and then in this case we have to uh, deal with some higher power lights another thing that I can do is to get you know three or four 200 watt lights that has a quiet fan and then I put all four like this two in front I mean two on top and two on the bottom with a huge frame which is gonna provide me a gorgeous light and everything is quiet so again for 600 watt light or 1200 watt, maybe GVM is gonna be releasing that soon or maybe Godox as well. So, you know, each tool for the right job. So as you can hear, the fan is pretty loud. I'm gonna give you the uh, five seconds here. And this is set to the uh, quietest fan. So on the menu, let's go to the fan mode. And then you have auto, quiet, which is already the quietest and also the high. Now the fan is really spinning really loud. So what is the uh, number one enemy of computer hard drives and LEDs? 
heat. So every time I use the slides, I don't have it programmed to auto. I'm always going to be leaving this thing at high, at the highest setting, especially if I'm cranking this up to 100% all the time because you don't want the heat to be accumulating here, especially when you try to uh, put uh, reflectors and all or soft boxes, and especially one of those uh, Fresnel lenses here, which also accumulates a lot of heat, regardless of the air openings that those things have. And one interesting thing here regarding the fan, actually heat rises, right? So every single light that I've ever owned, the heat blows in this direction here. This particular light, the heat actually blows right here, which means you can actually keep a uh, pair of uh, hot dog buns here to keep them warm if you like, because the heat that comes out of this thing here when you actually adjust the light is pretty hot here, pretty warm. So you can also reverse the light to the other way, something like this here, for example. And then you, uh, now the fan is gonna actually blow this way and you know, you get the point but I wanna use this way because I like my logos facing up. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna actually silent this fan down here so you guys can hear what I'm talking here, right? So, there you go. Now, one thing that I was so happy to see, as soon as I unpacked this whole thing here and plugged in the ballast, the first thing that I wanted to check is the uh, menu and its features, and especially fan noise. For example, the GVM ST100R, it doesn't matter, regardless what settings you place the fan here, auto or quiet or high, the fan kept spinning on the same RPM, which is a software, you know, firmware kind of thing. And this particular one here, the thing is actually obeying the thing. So you put it to high, high and then you know quiet or auto you know good good to know the one thing that i've been asking but they didn't do that yet is please give us a usb port so we can actually update the firmware because the way it is here i don't know how we're going to be fixing something that needs to be fixed to improve the effects you know the lightning effects whatever that is a usb port here is very important and other companies are you know providing us usb such as the uh, godox for example and this is actually very important but so far i'm not sure if there's a way to update I'm not aware of it because, again, there's no USB. And again, this is a 600 watt light, right? It generates a lot of heat, especially if you crank it up. I'm actually very happy to see that they actually provide some sort of a gauge here that helps you monitor how hot the light is getting, especially if you crank this up to uh, 600 watts, which everybody will be tempted to do, right? So one important thing, which is not in the manual, I don't even know why that's not there. So what I'm trying to say here, if you actually see the little fan thing not going away, don't ignore it and do not shut it off by using the uh, main uh, power switch right here. Wait until the display goes black and then you can actually power it off. Otherwise, you're going to damage the ballast here. Which, by the way, there are fans inside. I think there's only one fan here. But again, anything 600 watts or 1200 watts, you're talking about a lot of heat. So you have to have a fan here and also a fan there. So, you know, if you don't like fans, buy a lesser powerful light. So let's talk about the construction of this whole thing here. So these LEDs, they are densely compact together, which is nice. And everything you see here from the front element, the body, from the front to the middle to the sides, including the handle and also including the yoke, of course, and also including the part that mounts on the stand, everything is made of metal. The ballast, everything you see here is made of metal, the back of the ballast, the sides, and except the uh, top and bottom, which is made of plastic but provides a lot of uh, ventilation holes, which is nice, so air can actually sip through here. And the front is made of acrylic, of course, because this is the display here. The top and bottom of this ballast, the material they use here is plastic, but it feels almost like a rubberized texture, but you know, it actually feels good to touch and it actually looks good because it is a matte looking finish, it's not like anything shiny or anything like that, so it's pretty nice. And also the cable, look at this thing here, I was very happy to see the uh, very generous length in the cable, and which of course features a power cone style, because it's a more professional and more robust way to connect your light via AC, and this actually smells and feels and is the same gauge and looks like exactly the uh, ARRI uh, cables that I have uh, on the AC cable that they provide. So this is actually a very thick cable here, so very impressed. And not to mention the uh, cable that connects the uh, ballast to the light, same exact thick gauge here. And to install this cable, it features a uh, twist kind of thing in the back and also over here. So you simply match the uh, circles that you're gonna see here on top and then you just press it in 
and very gently screw that in there. Next, let's talk about powering this light on the field where there are no electrical outlets available. As you can see, this features a V-mount capability and of course we have to plug in two. And again, this is a 600 watt light, which I actually put the wrong V-mount batteries here on purpose. Unfortunately, I think the biggest battery that GVN makes is the BV160, which is a 160 watt hour battery. So what is exactly a watt hour battery? The watt hour, you can actually figure this out very easily. If you have a 100 watt light, such as the GVM ST100, R, this battery here will last you close to about 54 minutes or so because it's a 95 hour battery when the light is cranked up to 100%. And the same thing here, the BV160, which I believe is the biggest battery that GVM makes, on the 100 watt light is going to allow you to run about an hour and a half or so. And again, I put this battery here on purpose because this is actually the wrong size and amperage for this light if you crank it up to 100%. So I don't want to see my batteries draining so quickly because something is gotta damage the on the battery cells here. So if when I'm using V-mount batteries, you actually want to be uh, taking it easy on the wattage here, probably 60%, 50%. Which of course, every time you switch to the DC, you're going to have a full S-top, less brightness because. This is the way the light wants to run when you use the amount of batteries. If you could run this light at 100% with these batteries, again, it's not a good idea because of the rate of discharge. As soon as you plug in on the AC via the power con cable, the ballast is gonna sense that it's no longer running via DC, and then the uh, whole f-stop gain is gonna come up. But here's something that I do not recommend. Again, this is a higher amperage wattage light. So if you actually uh, switch to the uh, V-mount batteries, please turn off the light completely because I forgot to actually turn it off. You're gonna see a spark coming out here. And then I immediately removed the battery. So I was checking to see if there was like, you know, black marks because every time you have a short circuit or, or a spark of some sort, usually you have that little black thing there. So not, uh, fortunately nothing uh, bad happened to the battery. So again, don't forget to actually uh, turn the light off so you can actually safely install your V-mount battery. So you don't burn anything here, you don't blow a fuse and you don't damage the battery terminals or the battery cells itself. And of course, V-mount batteries, they are pretty expensive and especially the fact that you have to buy multiple pairs of those things because if you only have one or two that's not going to really do the trick because you need at least you know four of these batteries here by experience if you actually shoot on a real set or with a paid client you need several of those things here so speaking of price uh, one of the most reasonable priced batteries that I've seen. This brand here, Castar, is actually very nice and it works very well, so you might want to check this out here. And don't forget, there are two types of V-mount batteries. These are 14.8 volt V-mount batteries. This guy's and this guy's right here. There are 26 volt V-mount batteries out there, which they cost in excess of $500 or $400 a piece. And if you actually attempt to use the 26 V-mount batteries here, even though there are no stickers, do not use 26 volt uh, V-mount batteries here. First thing that's gonna happen is to immediately fry the board here. So again, stick to the regular stuff, 14.8 volt batteries, 26 volts here is a no-no. Now let's talk about the yoke. Everything in this light is made to actually match everything, you know, big light, heavy things here. So this yoke is actually very thick and it actually feels very good to the touch. And the way they built this locking part here, I'm glad to see that the GVM is actually improving everything on the hardware. This is going to withstand the heaviest modifier, whether it is a 120 inch, very heavy modifier. I think this thing weighs in excess of eight or seven pounds and also the uh, Fresnel lenses they want to attach here. So this thing is going to withstand and you don't need to over tighten anything. So this thing, when it locks, it locks. On the back of the light is very simplistic because all the controls are here. So there are no displays or anything on the back here. To mount the ballast on the light stand, it is so easy. And the way they made this here, it makes me feel very comfortable to just walk away because nothing is going to happen and this thing is not going anywhere. They actually provide a Mount Frodo looking kind of super clamp which has a V-mount battery shape, the uh, male on the uh, ballast and also the female installed in the actual clamp here. So once you actually hear that click, it makes sure you hear that click, otherwise this thing is gonna be falling on the floor. And of course you can actually mount this using some kind of a hanger there, but I don't want my ballast to be squashed anywhere. So before you actually remove this ballast, make sure you actually grab this handle they actually uh, included with this ballast. So I'm actually releasing the, uh, the thing here and it comes off like that. So it features a V-mount plate on the back. So all you have to do is to come here and to uh, install this here, hear that click, and then no problem. This thing is not going anywhere. 
I'm sure you guys are just as careful as I am, but I'm actually excessive careful with my equipment because I like things looking new. And I actually have very few people that can actually touch my equipment because I train them for several months before they can actually work for me. So what I'm trying to say here, if you are like me, there's a way to actually mount this ballast on the stand and not actually damaging the uh, finish of the ballast. You gotta wash the knobs here on these stands because they have at least two or three knobs here. So you actually mount the way I mounted here. So you can actually rotate this whole thing and the bottom is not going to touch the uh, knob under here, which is the uh, second uh, tier. Oh, the thing is heavy, yeah. It's, I forgot to mention, this thing is pretty heavy. So yeah, so you can actually do a 360 right here and nothing gets uh, touched or damaged or anything like that. To clean the light and the ballast, alcohol is just fine as long as it is 70% alcohol. A lot of people, they are scared of using alcohol and nothing's gonna come off. The logos here, they're not gonna be erased, you know, no problem. So if you wanna clean the light professionally, I've been doing this for years, I use alcohol and you gotta have a spray bottle. Don't pour the alcohol here because it's gonna get like a little bottle here in the middle. What you want is to spray it evenly like this. And this is a uh, microfiber cloth. You do not wanna touch any glass or acrylic because it's gonna have some microfiber residue here believe it or not. So what you wanna do is to use the same cloth that cleans your glasses here, something very soft and be very gentle here so you don't scratch. Yes, you can actually put alcohol on the uh, acrylic as well. So you actually clean the light this way here and then you can actually immediately dry with the other uh, side of the cloth, which is actually dry, the other side of the thing here. So this is how I do it. And then you can actually use a very soft brush. Don't go cheap on a brush. It has to be very soft brush. You're probably talking about, I don't know, $15 for a brush, but you know, you can actually brush this out here. Nothing scratches, not even the acrylic. So believe it or not, I do this ritual every single time I have a shoot and from the cameras to the lights to the stands, everything gets cleaned the way you saw here. It's crazy, but I love doing this. All right, next I'm gonna show you guys here some features and controls of this ballast, but instead of showing you guys here, which is difficult to see, and if I do this, you're gonna be losing my voice because I go past the microphone. So I'm gonna show you everything through the app, which by the way, the updates that they have made so far, nothing freezes, nothing crashes, and it's also a Bluetooth app. They got rid of the Wi-Fi, which was a nightmare. So you actually have your phone, emails come through, everything, no problem, as long as you're using the app or not. You do not need to go to your iPhone settings to go to the Bluetooth and register or pair anything. Everything is done through the app here. So the name GVM SD600D is right here, obviously. So you're gonna click on this. And it's very simplistic everything because this is not an RGB light. So there's not a ton of stuff to be showing here with this app. But anyway, let's click on that. It connects to the uh, light immediately. And here you have presets on 3200 degrees Kelvin, 4300 and 5600. And of course you can actually manually do the whole thing here, which varies from 2700 Kelvin all the way to 7500 degrees Kelvin. And on the bottom is your brightness setting. And this is actually going from one tenth of a percent increments all the way to 100% and very quickly. And one thing that I really like here, for example, if let's say you need to do 16.4% and then you keep pressing this plus button here, there you go. Instead of like fighting with your finger this way here, so to precisely tune or something. So this is actually very nice. And right here above is the uh, dimming curve for your brightness. So I usually prefer the linear. So you have the linear, exponential, logarithm, and S curve. To get out of here, press the uh, top left arrow and then source matching. This is something that I can actually easy dial in here, the color temperatures and all, but for convenience, they have all this here. So going back, the effects, I'm just gonna show you only one effect because you definitely wanna see this here because when you actually press the trigger, it only happens once. So your guy controlling this thing here when you're actually recording a movie take or whatever, nothing's gonna happen until you come here and press the trigger again, and then it happens again. That's pretty cool because most apps, this thing keeps going like this and I hate it. You have to block the light or turn something off. The trigger thing is awesome. The only light that I've seen that does this is the uh, Luxley company. They also feature the uh, trigger thing. Only when you want, that's when it happens. Amazing. And one last thing on the gear icon on the top right, and if you need support or if you have a problem with the light or whatever about us, you have all these emails here that you can actually send if you bought this light from B&H, here it is, or the Amazon, or straight to their website, and also the uh, phone number here, which is a US number. And that's it for the app. I hope that was helpful.
Okay, right now I'm at my studio here, and as you can see the light, I'm utilizing one tenth of a percent of its power, and the subject and the soft box here is exactly four feet away. So at this setting, as you can see here, I'm at 1 60th of a second, F1.8 and ISO 250. And the light is at 0.1%. Now let's crank this up to 100% and cut to the chase. Now here you can do two things. You can either adjust the ISO or your shutter speed or the aperture. I'm gonna lock this down all the way to 100 ISO. Now I'm going to adjust the aperture to the correct exposure here which in my opinion, F5 at ISO 100 at 1 60th of a second, it looks good this way here. Nowadays, most cameras, they are native ISO 800 on a sensor, so let's crank it up to 800. And I'm just gonna show you guys here on this particular ISO, the aperture that you can actually go all the way to F14 at 1 60th of a second. If you need to shoot faster, let's go to something like 160. And then we can actually bring the aperture back to F8. Or at ISO 100, you can actually shoot as fast as 1 400th of a second with the aperture F18. Now keep in mind when you're actually using a V-mount battery on this light, it is expected to drop a little bit of the, the power, so you're getting a full S-stop less when you're using from the AC uh, connection on the outlet there. So V-mount battery is always a full S-stop down. So if you're getting like F8 with the V-mount battery, you're getting 5.6. So again, with the soft box, with the light at 100%, you're getting an ISO 100, F5, 1 60th of a second, with the soft box four feet away. Right now, I'm using the light at 0.1% bare bulb, and this is what it looks like with the light at the same distance as it was before with the soft box. Over here, we have ISO 160, F18 at 1 60th of a second. The light is at 0.1%. Now here we have the light at 100%. I am torturing the subject right now because you have no idea how freaking bright this thing is. So right now, I'm just working with the aperture, the way it is here. ISO 100, let's close the aperture. And here you should look about right, F56 or F63. Then if you want to shoot all the way back to 18, uh, ISO 100, you work on a shutter here, which I don't recommend you shooting that fast on a regular video, but at the 1 640th of a second, you have this exposure here. Going back to something uh, reasonable, I'm shooting at 30 frames per second, so you know the minimum will be 60th of a second. So with the light at 100%, the lowest I can go is ISO 100 and 1 60th of a second. I'm shooting at one, uh, 30 frames per second. So if you want to change the uh, aperture, what will look okay here will be at least on F5.6. There's a tiny little bit of amount of zebra here. So this is what looks right. And of course, you're going to lose the light on the background because of the intensity of the light on the front. Now this is when things get serious. I have a reflector right now. So ISO 100, if you want to close the aperture, you have to go all the way down to F13. And I see a tiny little bit of zebra there. The face, this, is, this tells me this is a good exposure right here. And of course, we completely lose the background light unless we have another 300 watt light on the background of 600, right? Let's go back to uh, something like F4. Then we can shoot as fast as 1 640 of a second. And this is what you get with the 600 watt light. Now I'm gonna show you guys how the 100 watt light will look like. Now to compare, I'm using a 100 watt light, which is the GVM ST300R, full blast to 100% with the reflector. And if we don't work on the aperture, you're getting about F5 right here, at 1 60th of a second, ISO 100. Or we can go back to, again, to F18, all the way down to 1 400th of a second. The next test I'm gonna be doing, I wanna see if this light is gonna cut off brightness when using the V-mount battery. Right now, I'm running on AC only, so the numbers here don't really matter as long as we have the same reading. For example, right now at ISO 100, I'm having a reading of 16.2 using the AC. Let's see what happens with the V-mount battery, and I'm gonna step back on, on the same mark here. All right, so before it was 16.2, same thing ISO 100. Let's see what happens. 
F11.3. So yes, you do lose a whole f-stop by using a V-mount battery, which is something that I was actually already expecting to happen. Because of the one f-stop gain when you use this light via AC, you also feel a more increased amount of heat coming from the light because it's a whole f-stop brighter. And another thing, every time you actually switch from the V-mount to the AC, make sure you actually power the light off on the actual red switch completely because otherwise when the light is on, if you actually attempt to install the V-mount batteries, you might have some sparks going on, which I don't recommend. So every time you switch batteries, turn the whole unit off for safety. Right now I have the light with the reflector on. I'm using a whole 100% here. This light is exactly one meter away from the background. Let's measure this light here. The ISO 100 at 30 frames per second, you're reading F22.4. Now if you're shooting at a higher ISO, this is what you get with this ISOs here. ISO 200 at 32 and a half, ISO 400 at 45 and a half, and ISO 800, a ridiculous 64.5. F90 at 1600. Now we have the light with bare bulb, and again, at 100%, one meter away. And this is what we're getting here. About F11, ISO 100. At ISO 400, you're gonna get F22, ISO 800, F32, 1600, F45. So let's talk about color temperature here. For example, let's say that this is the most accurate light in color temperature on the planet, right? So every creator, every movie maker, whatever it is that you do, everybody has their particular style. There's no such thing as wrong or right. For example, the movie Matrix, everybody knows what the movie is, right? The whole thing is green because that's the look that the movie asks for. That immediately throws out of the window the accuracy of the light. So what I'm trying to say here, as soon as you start color grading, you actually throw this whole thing out of the window, right? This light here is fairly accurate as far as colors, and I don't have a color spectrometer here, but it doesn't seem to be too green or too magenta. It looks right, and most lights they buy brand new, they're usually falling towards the magenta, and with time, as far as people tell, they will tend to be greener and greener, which is also not a good thing. So what I don't like about this light, what it's doing here, because when I actually dial this thing to 5600 degrees Kelvin, yes, this light will give you 5600 degrees Kelvin, but it is not parked at the 5600 degrees Kelvin number right here. You have to crank it up to a whole 6500 degrees Kelvin or 68-ish, something like that, to actually uh, match the other lights. GVM included. So the SD200D is actually very accurate. When I actually dial that thing to 5600 degrees Kelvin, it is very accurate. Now the RGB, I think is the SD150R, for example, and this particular ballast here, they have the same issue with the color temperature, and the uh, SD300R is actually very accurate, so go figure. So you never know what, what you're gonna get here. But this particular light, like I said, it has a little bit, actually a lot of difference between the uh, Kelvin, what they're supposed to be at. So how to fix this is very simple, because this is all software, but unfortunately, there are no USB ports in the slides, so I don't know how to possibly uh, upgrade the firmware here. Another thing that you can do is to simply test the light to your liking, whatever looks like 5600 degrees Kelvin to you, or if you have the color spectrometer, even better, but if you don't have, just put your camera here and see what looks good, and then write down this number, for example, 6600 degrees Kelvin is actually happening to be the 5600. Just put a piece of tape here or memorize there, so every time that you want to set in a hurry, you actually dial this thing, for example, 6600 degrees Kelvin, you know it's going to be 5600 degrees Kelvin. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but this is the uh, quick solution for this here. So I didn't really fully check about the warmer side of the light, for example, at 3200 degrees Kelvin, how well it's gonna match a tungsten light, for example, but it probably falls on the same category here. But the uh, most uh, prominent problem is at the uh, 5600 degrees Kelvin. One thing that I actually requested several times for GVM to stop making is those little cheapy little knobs, especially for a light of this price here, because when you actually turn this, if it gets in the way, you cannot pull this out like this here to adjust the actual position right here. So when you actually here, it stops right there, and it's actually a very flimsy little plastic little thing here, it's very simplistic, and they should actually upgrade, especially on lights like this price here, including the GVM YU300R, for example, those panels are incredible, but but again, they actually come with these little knobs right here. 
And these two knobs here is from the Godox SL60W. Back in the day, like in 2018 or 2019, I bought them a long time ago. But again, I always replace my knobs here. So what do I think about this light? I think this light is great. And GVM is actually constantly improving better and better every time they actually release a new light. It's great. There are a few things here, which is only a handful of things that I don't like about this light. I mean, the color is accurate, but you just have to dial here a different number to do the 5600 degrees Kelvin. Number two is the absence of a USB port so we can actually easily upgrade the formula of this light. And number three is to give us the ability to be able to kill this fan. Of course, some restrictions are gonna be involved. For example, this light is gonna be only limited to 20% or whatever they think it is safe so you don't burn the light out, you know, as far as the LEDs go. But that'll be cool to see here because if this happens to be the only light they brought on set, you can easily use this light on a tiny room or whatever, very close to the microphones here and just use like, you know, I don't know, even 5% or maybe 2% of the slide, especially that most of you guys like to shoot everything with a big shallow depth of field, F1.8 or F1.4. If you could go 0.2, you probably would do that as well. So if you could use like 1% of the slide, that would be suitable, you know, again, as long as the fan could be killed here. So right now, the fan is gonna be spinning here forever and ever. Next on the balance here, I'm just gonna show you guys real quick the menus here. So to access menu, of course, press the menu button right here. So you have the DMX setup, press this button, and then you have the address and the uh, bit mode, press back. Next is the dimming curve, press this button again, you have all the settings right here, whichever one you prefer, press back. Light frequency, depending what you're doing, slow motion, whatever, or if you live in a different country, you can actually adjust from 15 kilohertz all the way to 25 kilohertz. If you're shooting normal video, I recommend that you actually keep it at 25 kilohertz to avoid flickering and all the issues. Press back, Bluetooth reset, press this button, and then to select no, you turn this button here or yes, and I don't wanna do that because I'm gonna have to connect this light to the app again. So click no, press it in. Now fan mode, this balance here is gonna have you adjust the fan the way it's supposed to be. For example, you have auto and listen to the fan. Quiet is the same thing because the light is cool, the light is actually off. And don't forget the temperature gauge right here. And the, uh, this setting here, the high, the fan is gonna really crank it up. And this is the setting that I recommend if you guys are not doing any sensitive thing with audio, always leave the set to high as a default. You can actually come back here anytime and switch to either auto or quiet. I'm gonna leave my set to high. Display setup. I usually leave my brightness at 10 because I'm not in a movie theater, why would I need this thing dimmed? This is a 600 watt light. When we actually turn on the light at 0.1%, this whole thing is gonna be you know, irrelevant. Or you can actually go here and always on or it should disappear after 10 seconds. Press back and then factory reset, press this button and then you can do yes or no by turning this knob here. I will choose no. Press back and you're back to CCT. Then of course you have the mode CCT, source matching and white effect and all and back to CCT. Also notice that the brightness here, you can actually have this light set to 0.2% right here. While this one here is at 28.5%, you set to this particular 20% here, whatever. And then the next one, you can also do the same different intensity here. So every time you go back, it's gonna memorize whatever percentage that you left here, which is pretty convenient. Separate all three. And here's the battery gauge. And that's it for the menu. And that's the end of my review. I hope you found this content helpful. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please drop them down in the comment section. I also, I love to see the comments there and I respond to everything that I see. So once again, thank you very much for your time. And by the way, if you want to utilize my b and or Amazon affiliate links, that doesn't cost you anything extra. The price will be the same. All happens here is support the channel and I receive a tiny little commission when you actually purchase this product from me. So once again, thank you for watching and hopefully you buy this for me if you are interested in buying this. So once again, thanks for everything. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next time.